had this idea today that 97 is more than a thousand. And I had this idea because some of you who are on my mailing list know I sent an email the other day. There's a training I've done for years called how to make a thousand dollars anytime you want. And I created it some years ago because I was tired of people telling me that they couldn't afford stuff. And I was like, you know, it's not that hard to bring in money, particularly for my programs. It's not like I'm charging $30,000 for things have done, but not currently. So I was like, yeah, I mean, you all are super smart and capable and you're up to a ton of cool things. Surely you have the power to bring in a little extra income when you need it. And the phrase that I love about that is you are your own economy. You can bring in however much money you want to, whenever you want to, when you know like what lever to pull. And then it doesn't matter what's going on in the world in Washington, in the economy, in the weather, in your friends, in your, it doesn't matter because you are not subject to exterior economic forces or you are, but not as much as you think you are. So I was like, oh good, I'll re-record it. It's a bonus for people who are in the Get It Done lab. If you're in the lab, don't sign up for it because you're already getting it. We're doing it next Wednesday at four Pacific, seven Eastern. So a little bit different date and time. So I sent out an email and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a $97 program. It's going to teach you how to bring in a thousand dollars anytime you want. There's nothing tricksy about it. There's no MLM. There's no like, oh, you have to buy this other thing. You don't have to be on social media. It's, it's very straightforward. I mean, it's counterintuitive, but straightforward, if that makes sense. I, I, I've never seen so many not people not sign up for something. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? It's 97 bucks. It's an hour and a half with me. Like, we'll get this done. You'll get your questions answered. Like if I said, you know, give me $97 and I'll give you a thousand, wouldn't you say yes to that? And if I'm saying, oh, give me $97 and I will show you how to make a thousand over and over and over again, I don't get why people wouldn't say yes to that. And I get it that inside like $97 that I have in my hand currently is more than your fictional thousand dollars that I may or may not get later. And it is true that asking people to spend money does activate the same part of your brain that is the pain center of your brain. Like that feeling you have of like when you're handing over money for something, that's legit. Even as an experiment, because you know, satisfaction guaranteed or your tuition cheerfully refunded. If you do this training and or listen to the recording and then you're like, mm, I don't care for it. We'll give you your $97 back. I don't care. You know, if I haven't helped you, why would I want your money? There's also by th theory that 15 is greater than 60, right? 15 focused minutes on something that matters to you is better than an hour dithering or better than waiting for that hour that you think is going to come of like, oh, I just need a full hour to like concentrate. But then that never happens right? Something always happens. The phone rings, you get an email, you get distracted. It's time for lunch. But 15 minutes, kind of amazing. And we just had our daily practicum. And sure enough, a bunch of you showed up and I can't tell you, you know, it's 15 minutes. I say, hi, we breathe. I hit the timer. Everybody puts their heads down and does their thing. I stay on camera. Most people don't, but that's fine. And then 15 minutes goes off and I'm like, hi, everybody. And everybody's like, that was amazing. Like everybody's all smiling and cheerful. It's so fun. And it's so funny how the time flexes, right? For me, the 15 minutes today felt like forever. Like I got so much done. I was like, really, is it still only 15 minutes? Right. So 15 minutes isn't always 15 minutes. 15 minutes is often a whole world. And then, you know, and you hear the thing about how, you know, 50 is the new 30, 56 is the new 36. I'll take it. Sure. Why, why not? I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but yay. And certainly 15 minutes spent connecting with a former colleague is going to mean more than six days of cold emailing people right? If you're job hunting or just looking for, you know, to raise the revenue of your own business, 20 minutes spent commenting on other people's posts on LinkedIn is better than two hours of you crafting the world's most perfect blog post. Things that have connection, things that are based on sincere connection are more valuable than things that are anonymous. So I'm wondering what other weird math things you've noticed. <laughs> um, like I remember when I would be thrifting in Chicago in the, in the eighties and nineties, back when thrifting was 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 good was the good stuff because we had all the stuff from the 50s and 60s right and 70s stuff was made with you know I had like four big cashmere overcoats that was my winter coat in Chicago was this beautiful men's cashmere overcoats that I would get for four dollars and you spend enough time in the thrift store and most things were tagged at 50 cents or 75 cents or a dollar and then all of a sudden you come across something that's eight dollars and you're like eight dollars that's outrageous but then I'm at Harrods in London visiting the fret sheets and the Gucci bags and all of a sudden the idea of spending two thousand dollars on a set of sheets doesn't seem that weird so it's all proportional it's all proportional it's all perspective you know if you don't have 97 dollars then 97 dollars is a lot and obviously if you don't have 97 dollars or you're having rent and grocery issues skip this one but if if not, I'm just so interested to see what you could create. So this how to make a thousand dollars training, I always say it like it walks you in the side door, spins you around three times, covers you with fairy dust, and then presto, you have a plan to make 
$1,000 or more in the next couple of weeks. It's not designed to be like a whole business plan or like change the whole course of your life. It's a short-term game to just bring in some extra cash when you want it. And certainly with the holidays coming up, I don't know about you all, but some extra change could come in handy. And it's meant for you to do it with you, with your resources, with your personality, with the things you like to do. It's meant to stretch you a little bit, but it's not like you have to suddenly fall in love with sales or suddenly become a TikTok influencer, which I have to say, having recently become a TikTok influencer, it's so cool, you guys. All these strangers, all these people I have never heard of or seen, and they're watching the TikTok videos and being like, I feel seen. I'm like, yes, yay, come join us. So I'm wondering what questions you guys have. Where are you at? What's get, where do you get stuck financially or inquisitively or as you think about, you know, your future? What's what's going on for you? What small actions can you leverage to bring in big results? What little bits of things can you do that are going to move the needle on your life, move the needle on your productivity, move the needle on your relationships, on your health, on your finances, on your business, on your art? Like, what is it? You know, I know a lot of your life is going terrific, but where are the parts that aren't going so terrific? Where are the parts that you're like, hmm, yeah, that could be improved. What's the tiny thing you could do that might move that needle? What's the relationship you could tap back into to help solve that problem? What's the phone call you could make? What's the 90 second doodle you could draw that would just like get some of the feelings out? And where is math not math for you? Where is $97? 97 more than a thousand. Where is 15 more than 60? 15 minutes more than 60 minutes. When I take 15 minutes in the morning to do my prayer and meditation work and do a little bit of journaling, it leverages my whole day. Like everything goes so much better. I'm so much calmer. I'm so much more focused. It's so easy to skip it. And every time I skip it, like I watch the train go off the tracks. <laughs> like I'm like, wow, this is really not working for me. And every time I do do it, even as reluctantly as I do it sometimes, it always makes a massive difference in my day. So that's where, again, 15 minutes is way more impactful. And Joe says, I've got to stop watching the news. And Joe, all of you stop watching the news. Stop watching the news. Stop watching the news. Turn it off. You have to remember that television news is part of the television entertainment industry. They are not there to tell you things that they think you should know. They are there to tell you things that they think you will keep watching because the more you watch, the more viewership they have, the more viewership they have, the more they can charge for advertising. That's their business model. So it works for them to constantly be reporting breathless crisis so that you stay tuned in. There's so many problems with this, but one of them is the more we hear about things, the more normalized it becomes. And there's shit in this world you do not want to get normalized to. None of us ever want to be in the state where we're like, oh, really? Another mass shooting? Oh, well, no, no, no. Get your news from preferably from reliable independent sources, not just people who agree with you, but other sources. I like to go to the BBC News. I like to go to some news sometimes from out of the country. And I just skim, you know, I skim the headlines. I'm like, okay, I got it. You know, I don't want to be completely uninformed. On the other hand, how much my heart hurts and how much my energy gets drawn away if I get sucked in to world news stories. So do yourself a massive favor turn off the television news completely forever and then really monitor your participation in the t television entertainment news complex, the newspaper entertainment news complex. It's not healthy. It's not right. And particularly not first thing in the morning. There's study after study after study that shows that the way you spend the first hour or two of the morning has an exponential effect on the rest of the day. So if you start your day doom scrolling, imagine the trajectory of that rocket. How's that going to go? Right? You're not even at, your feet haven't even hit the floor. You're not even out of bed yet and you're in despair over the state of the world. On the other hand, you spend those same 15 minutes doing whatever works for you, prayer, meditation, dancing, playing guitar, ukulele, going for a walk, having a cup of tea, snuggling with your sweetheart or your animals or whatever. Fill up yourself first and then take your attention to the outside world. Yeah, Isabel says, I stopped watching the news years ago or check myself into a hospital. Well, exactly, exactly. John says, you just solidified that for me. I was weaning myself off the news. Now is the time. It's over. Even Rachel Maddow is a ruse as much as I like her. Not right. Um, yeah, I dig Rachel Maddow and she's only on once a week. I suppose you could, you know, I mean, if, if something enjoys you and fills you and lifts you up, then absolutely do it. But um, gosh, the yelling and the hyperbole and the fighting and the name calling and the not listening, like I got no time for that. And I don't think you do either. Your work is too important. You're here for a reason. 
you've got stories to tell, you've got people to help, you've got art to share, you've got a creative voice unlike anyone else's. We need you. We need the best of you. So this is why, you know, you need to eat good food and be in good relationships and surround yourself with a community of people who, who cherish you and support you and, and lift you up. This is why you need to have enough money in the bank to feel a little nest egg anyway. Not that money buys security particularly, but it can help give you some freedom in your decision-making. Lack of money tends to limit your decision-making. Having a little extra money means you can have more options. MK says, it's been so nice that my new job has reconnected me to the theater community. I've been doing a lot of music writing and found a community of music lovers on Substack. So for me, how do I convert that to income producing activities is the challenge. Right, exactly. That's exactly the kind of thing we would look at in the training, MK. Good question. Good question. <laughs> Sign up. That's what I have to say. And we'll figure that out for you because that's exactly the, the missing part of the bridge, right? And this is what we do. We help you figure out what it is you want to offer, who you want to offer it to, how much you want to charge for it, how many of those you need to sell to make a thousand. And then we answer a bunch of questions that sort of get your mind around uh, some of the things that might otherwise be stumbling blocks. And like I said, you know, in an hour or so, a little over that, you'll have a plan. And you can test it. You know, I'm not saying that our plans are perfect, uh, but you'll have something to test. And then you can, and you'll have a whole month of practicum. So you can come back in and go like, Sam, we tried that. And that it, I only got one, but the other two were not right. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, let's tweak it this way. Come back tomorrow. Okay, that tweaking worked. Now I've got four. That's great. Oh my gosh, that's $2,000. Yay. Whatever. The thing I see over and over again with investing in programs is it's not so much that people don't trust me. I feel like you guys do trust me. I think... I mean, you're here, <laughs> um, you're voting with your time, which is pretty serious. But I wonder if sometimes you don't trust yourselves. I wonder if sometimes you feel like, oh, I've bought stuff already. I've tried things and then I don't do it. Or I get bored halfway through, or I buy all these books and I don't read them. And you feel like you've let yourself down over and over again. I get that, but I think you might be misinterpreting the data. I think a lot of times the programs you buy and the books you buy and the self-help stuff you're into, it's not really designed for the highly creative person. It runs more along the lines of conventional wisdom, which again, not wrong, but not so helpful to those of us who we don't just think outside the box. We had no idea there was a box to begin with. I like to believe that there's like sort of an inner program director or administrator who's like keeping track of your trainings and the stuff you listen to. And they're like, mm, I think you're done with this. You know, like you've listened to the first two episodes and that's really all there is. The rest of it's not that interesting. And they just sort of remove things from your consciousness or put in prods of like, no, no, you should listen to more of this. It's good for you. I mean, you can trust yourself that if you only read the first third of any book, that's all you needed to read. You didn't need to finish the book. That's why you didn't finish it because you didn't need to. And I have to tell you, as someone who reads a ton of books, especially nonfiction, mm, often the last two thirds are not really worth, the juice is not worth the squeeze, as my sister would say. You can trust yourself. You're not gonna let yourself down again. And like I said, if for some reason it doesn't work for you, let me know. I'll give you your money back. It's 97 bucks. No big deal. Right. And I'm interested to see what you create. I'm interested to see what new models of enterprise you might create. You could have 10 people over for a Sunday tea, ask them for 99 bucks a piece and do your tarot readings for them. You could offer a morning meditation series. I remember doing that one time with a bunch of other creativity teachers, Linda Sievertson, Sark, Jennifer Lee, and we had an ebook of Palooza. And we all just offered our free eBooks, but we all mailed for everybody. And then everybody got opt-ins and stuff. It was really fun. We could have charged for that, but we decided to do it for free. But it was great to get allied with other people that I admire and respect in my own field. And when you create it, you're the authority, which is awesome. Yeah. So I'm curious, how is this landing for you? What are you thinking? Where, uh, what are, what's going on inside of your mind? You know, it's a little weird. These one-way conversations, like I try to feel what you're thinking psychically, like I started to try to tune in, but I'm eager to answer your questions and know where, where you're at. So like I said, if this is a resonating for you at all, where you're like, oh yeah, I think I would like a thousand dollars. And I think I would like to transform my relationship with money. And I think I'd like to do it as the person that I am from where I am in my exact life right now, not waiting for me to be better or have some certification or something, but today, then go ahead and sign up. And like I said, do it with a friend if you want, split it with them. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Don't tell my, don't tell Veronica I said that because we're supposed to sell them individually, but you know. And because I did try to do reading parties, guess they didn't reach out to the right people. Or did you not give them enough incentive to show up? Or did you not remind them enough? Did you not call them the day before or the morning of say, look, we're really looking forward to seeing you? Because sometimes just because people say yes, doesn't mean they're showing up. Just because people enroll doesn't mean they're showing up. Just because people buy a ticket doesn't mean they're showing up. So sometimes you have to welcome them. Was the benefit super clear? You might need to 
experiment a little bit with the offer and with how it goes. I wouldn't just do it once and say, oh, it didn't work and forget about it. And see, John says, I'd like to give it a try. Oh, wait, that'd be great, John. I'd love to see you there. Am I in? If so, how do I connect? Is it live or recording? Otherwise, I will gladly pay the 97. Just go to therealsambennett.com forward slash how to make 1000. There's a, you can enroll there. We'll also get you the month of November free in practicum, which John, I know you really enjoyed this summer. So it'd be great to have you back in the group. Leah says, it helps so much to hear ideas from others. It opens my mind to different possibilities, which is way helpful. Right, exactly. Exactly. Yes, it is a live event and it will be recorded. So you can be there live, ask me questions, but also you have lifetime access to the recording. So you can always go back, revisit, take it slower, try it with another idea. You know, I know a lot of you have three or four ideas. You're like, I'm not sure which one I want to do. Well, put each one through the process and see what you end up with. And like I said, if you have a friend that you think might benefit from this, please send them that link, send them to that page and say, Hey, this is my friend, Sam, and let's do it together. Everything's better when you got a buddy. Yeah. Leah, I'd be excited to, to help you think of some out of the box ways that you can be monetizing what you do in a way that feels better to you. Cause I know if I'm remembering right, you've had to do some work and take some gigs that you weren't so pleased with. So I want you to feel thrilled about going to work. I want you to feel thrilled about your contribution to the world. And I want you to feel thrilled about how you're compensated. We don't do our work just for the money, but we don't do it not for the money either. Right. June says, Sam is more than about expanding our relationship with money. It's about expanding our joy and self-acceptance. Thank you, June. That's very thoughtful of you to say. I really appreciate that. I'm, 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 I'm honored that you feel that's true. And just as I got sidetracked by health issues, getting back into helpful routine, 15 minutes at least again. Yeah, babe, I feel you. I'm at almost two years of long haul COVID. I know what it's like to get distracted by health issues, but I also know what it's like to keep showing up anyway. My manuscript is in with the editor at the publishers. So hopefully we're still on track for a spring launch of the book. And P.S. FYI, just to put in your calendar, the next session of Get It Done Lab, the next cohort will start in January, and it's going to be all about promotion and marketing. It's going to be all about how to reach your people in a way that feels great to you, because I'm going to be prepping for my book launch. So we'll just do it all together. Leah says, yes, reshuffling life, looking for what works better for me. Definitely want to leave work hard for less model behind. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause that never works out. Anything you do just for the money is never worth the money. And anything where you feel like you're working really hard for the money is also not generally worth the effort. There's definitely better ways, particularly for people like you who have so many talents and skills. People love you so much. You're so great at what you do. It's a little disordered to have you thumping along in an hourly job, you know? Not that you can't keep that for the, you know, steady Eddie, but also to have a little side hustle where you can really bloom and share with the world because the world needs you so bad. Oh my gosh. (laughs) The world needs what you have so badly. Every one of you. I'm going to say that again. The world needs what you have. Needs your insights. It needs your love. It needs your crazy daisy ideas. We need you with your circular wheels within wheels, mind, and your sincere heart. We need you as an antidote to all that evening news stuff, right? This has been delightful. I love hanging out with you all. In cases I'm enjoying my day job and still have room for other things. Absolutely. I'm not against a day job. Don't don't get me wrong. I've had hundreds of them. (laughs) I've made a list actually in the new book. I was like, I've done scarf tying demonstrations at department stores. I was a whitewater river guide. I was a barista. I delivered flowers. I once had a gig flying back and forth from Burbank airport to San Francisco airport because some rich guy wanted to game their airline points system. Like that was seriously my job. Very weird. Okay. So let's, so sign yourself up, realsambennett.com forward slash how to make 1000. Join my email list. If you're not on my email list, just go to the realsambennett.com and hit the get started button. Cause that's really how I communicate. I try to remember to post stuff on social media, but I don't always remember. Good. You ready to take one more breath and think about where your $97 could bring you a thousand dollars or $10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars. Let's. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for doing this with me.